improving the lives of 7 billion people takes many shapes. Clean cook stoves in Kigali, early pregnancy care in Manila, smoking cessation programs in London, air pollution restrictions in Beijing. These and other initiatives relied on the same source, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington. The Institute was founded in 2007, but its roots go back to 1973 in Difa in Southeast Niger. 10-year-old Christopher Murray, his parents John, a cardiologist, and Anne, a microbiologist, along with his two older siblings, spent nine months volunteering at a hospital. The boy's life changed forever. I was a sort of rouseabout. I helped my dad run the pharmacy. I helped him with minor surgery, a few other activities. And so I spent that time as a kid seeing people who were very sick and really wanted to understand uh, why. Why were people in this poor rural community so much sicker than people back home in the United States? Uh, what could you do to like make long-term lasting change? And I've been searching for the answers ever since. 15 years later, Murray encountered Alan Lopez while both were working at the World Health Organization in Geneva. Murray showed Lopez a new formula he'd been devising for measuring the loss of healthy life, Disability Adjusted Life Years, or DALI. In 1993, they collaborated on a groundbreaking report published by the World Bank. I remember thinking when we were doing this, uh, what is all this going to lead to? Is this going to have any impact whatsoever, or is this just a, a solid effort at, at quantifying health worldwide? That World Development Report jolted the global health community and led to a consensus that rigorous health metrics were essential to improve health worldwide. That first study grew into the ongoing Global Burden of Disease Project. The world really needed an independent uh, uh, body to do that at arm's length from the uh, decision-making processes in the United Nations systems. In 2007, with initial funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation opened its doors in Seattle. The staff was made up of three Harvard transplants, Chris Murray, and Manuela Gakidu, and Michael McIntyre. We wanted it to create a place that would be a very trusted source for health information. So if somebody wanted to know anything about a health condition anywhere around the world, there would be a place that would provide reliable and solid information. And that's why we created IHME to fill in a gap because such a place did not exist. Advancing the discipline of health metric science influencing health policy and programs, nurturing the next generation of health data specialists, mapping the world's most pernicious diseases in five by five kilometer increments, analyzing and forecasting health needs, examining health expenditures, and studying why people die and what causes them to be sick or injured on local levels in the US and other countries. An ambitious undertaking, an IHME with more than 300 staff is up to the task. The IHME has introduced a, an unparalleled rigor in quantifying risks, what people are dying from, um, the burden of disease, um, and offered um, a far more rational approach to um, policy making, to resource allocation, to understanding what we're dying from and what we are suffering from. And that has been a massive contribution. In 2012, this massive contribution caught the attention of journalist and author Jeremy Smith. They're trying to give a really comprehensive big picture result to policymakers in a way that's accessible. And you can follow the trends over time. And that's exciting because uh, if you want to get somewhere, it's, you can't just go faster. If you're lost, you have to stop and get a map. So with health spending, we're going faster, but we're not consulting a map. So this was the map. So how does IHME, with collaborators in more than 130 nations, define success? And what will the Institute look like 10 years from now? We have to go beyond mortality, morbidity, and risk factors. We need to look at ecosystem change. We need to look at climate change. We need to look at human well-being. We need to look at biodiversity. So that's, I think, the direction that IHME needs to travel. 
Under the leadership of Dr. Chris Murray, over the next 10 years, IHME will build an even stronger foundation for strategic decision-making leading to better health for people worldwide. And its innovative education programs are also training the next generation in the growing field of health metric scientists. Measuring the today and forecasting the tomorrow, all seven billion of us in every city, every village, every corner of the planet. An ambitious, daunting challenge, but with an unprecedented reward, helping enable all people to live long, healthy lives. This is something we're doing as a global community to take the best science applied to the task of measuring health and how, we how health systems respond to, to people's needs. And so that sort of a natural evolution, if you will, of now having two and a half thousand people around the world working together, focused on these tasks, I think is probably one of the more important achievements that we've had.